keeping an eye on my on my clock here and just want to make sure that we give everybody a chance to uh, settle in and get comfortable before we start. We have a poll running in the background here. So as you're joining, you should be able to see a poll where we're asking you to tell us a little bit about yourself uh, before we introduce ourselves here. We'd love to know who you are, who is joining us here today. I see we have folks from Jamaica and Costa Rica and Guatemala, shout out to Guyana. Hello, hello everyone. Wow, we have folks from all over the world here. How amazing. All right, we'll get started here. Let me just get my, my bearings. But before we talk about all of the wonderful opportunities in the land of the living skies, that is the name of Saskatchewan, here where we are today, um, I'd like to take just a second to introduce ourselves here. So my name is Allie. Hi, everyone. Um, and I'm joined by my colleague, Caitlin. We are both uh, student recruitment officers at the University of Saskatchewan. I've been with the team for ooh, about three or four years now, so it's been it's been quite some time. I've really, really enjoyed my position here because I've also graduated from the University of Saskatchewan, so I just absolutely love to talk about USASC. And like I said, I'm joined by my colleague, Caitlin. Hi, Caitlin. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, everyone. So like Ali, I also graduated from USASC. Um, and I've been in this position uh, for a little over a year, and I am a recruitment officer, but I specialize in engineering. So if any of you have uh, any questions about engineering, I'd be happy to help you out. Um, and then I've also worked on other places across campus, like the International Student Center. So if you have any questions about what it's like to be an international student, um, that's what I used to work with lots. So I'd be happy to answer any of those questions in the chat. And I'll pass it back to Ali. Thank you, Caitlin. We sure do have a lot of international folks with us here today from Ghana and Bolivia and Laos, all the way from Guatemala. Oh, I am so excited. Okay, we'll get started here today and we'll tell you a little bit about where we are from. We are from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, where the University of Saskatchewan's main campus is located. And whenever we gather on behalf of USASC, we like to acknowledge the lands and indigenous peoples of the area here. And so the University of Saskatchewan uh, territory, as we gather here today, we acknowledge is on Treaty 6 territory and the homeland of the Métis. And we pay our respects to the First Nations and Métis ancestors of this place. And we reaffirm our relationships with one another. So that's where we're located. But we'd also love to know where you're from. I see lots of folks throwing this in the chat. We also have a poll going to let us know where you're joining us from, whether you're in Canada or outside of Canada. In the, in the poll, we saw lots of folks from all over the world. I see we have also a few folks from Canada. Hello, fellow Canadians. Caitlin and I are both joining you from, well, I'm in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Caitlin, are you in Saskatoon? I sure am. Caitlin's also with us in Saskatoon. We are working from home today. As you can see, my the tropical location that is my dining room, <clears throat> makeshift office. All right. Thank you, Caitlin, for running that poll for us. We'll move right along here today. And just in case uh, we get interrupted or you don't have uh, time to stay for the entire presentation, we just wanted to make sure that we throw up our contact information right away. And this is where you can um, find all the great things about the University of Saskatchewan at admissions.usask.ca. And we've put our contact information for our uh, recruitment admissions and transfer credit team there as well as our University of Saskatchewan Language Center. And we'll talk a little bit more right away here as to why we put that information there and why that's really, really important for us here today. So in the odd event that we don't get all the way to the end, thank you for joining us here today and we'll move right along. The University of Saskatchewan and Caitlin and I are located in beautiful, beautiful Canada, country of diverse opportunities for absolutely everybody. It is a wonderful, wonderful country. I myself am an, an international student to Canada. I hail from the lands of Romania. And so my family and I have been just very blessed with all of the different opportunities that are available here. And the University of Saskatchewan and Caitlin and I are located in the beautiful province of Saskatchewan, kind of right in the middle of Canada. Beautiful topography here in Saskatchewan. We'll show you a few pictures 
about our province. There's our province, land of the opportunities. Um, that's what we call Saskatchewan. One really, really amazing thing about Saskatchewan, though, that um, I do have to say is perhaps our, just because our my slide wants to freeze up here, is that we have a wonderful immigrant nominee program through um, which folks from all over the world can access all the different opportunities here in Saskatchewan and apply for um, the permanent residency here. And so because of all of the great things that Saskatchewan has to offer, um, the immigration is available all throughout Canada. This process is a little bit faster and it does accept quite a few uh, more folks in, in all of its stages. So there are four different categories that you can apply through the Saskatchewan Immigrant Nominee Program. And if my slides would advance, there we go. <laughs> I could tell you that we are located in the capital of Saskatchewan in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. What can I tell you about Saskatoon? Um, we are just a wonderful and beautiful prairie city. We are whew, ranked first in Canada for air and water quality. So it's absolutely beautiful, all the natural spaces that surround us. Um, and the population of Saskatoon, a growing city, might I add, is at about well, 250,000 and growing. Um, but we are one of Canada's sunniest cities. We have over 2,000 and some hours of sunshine every single year. And so we're very, very blessed with that. And we're Canada's science city. That's one wonderful thing about Saskatoon. Along with the fact that um, among the major cities in Canada, we have one of the lowest uh, cost of living. So that's absolutely fantastic. And it's just a leading center of culture and learning and innovation. And one of the most, I would say, socially engaged and most literate cities in Canada. Let me advance my slides again, if they would. My internet is being absolutely slow today. And in the middle of beautiful Saskatoon, Saskatchewan is where the University of Saskatchewan is located the university that the world needs. I'll show you a few pictures about, uh, to, to showcase our campus here. But while we are talking a little bit about the University of Saskatchewan, Caitlin's going to throw up another poll here. So the University of Saskatchewan was established a long, long time ago, back in 1907. So we have a very long um, history of excellence here at USASC. And fun fact, our campus is actually recognized as one of the most beautiful campuses in Canada. Um, one of the most beautiful places to study all across this nation. And there's so much green space. There's all of these um, rainstone buildings and tree line walkways that just make the campus a beautiful, beautiful place to live and to study. And as you, as you kind of explore this place, you come to discover all the different spaces, some of them showcased here, that, that come to make your university experience really. We have museums and galleries and libraries and sporting event venues um, and student hangouts and all, all kind of the natural spaces where, where life happens and where your most powerful memories are going to be created here at USAS. And our family, USAS family, it is big and it is constantly growing. We have over 25,000 students from all over the world. So that'll be music to the ears of all the international students that are joining us here today. We have over, I think, I think we need to have this, this slide, we're closer to 3,500 international students this year. Um, and our general student body population is constantly, constantly growing. We have over 3,000 uh, self-declared indigenous students. And our international student population represents over 130 different countries from across the world. How amazing is that? Okay. What else can I tell you about the University of Saskatchewan? We are a member of the U15 here in Canada. So today, the University of Saskatchewan is known as a prestigious institution and a member of the uh, U15 group, which you can see there what the U15 group is, which essentially means that out of about 97 universities across Canada, we are in the top 15 for research. And this is something that we are very, very proud of. USASC is one of the top research intensive medical doctoral universities in Canada. And we are home to world leading research in areas of global importance. Some of them you can see there on your screen, uh, like water and food security, for instance. And the study and, and all the discovery that is taking place here at USASC is also really enhanced by all of the different um, outstanding facilities that we have, including our Canadian light source synchrotron, the only synchrotron in Canada located on our campus, um, our Vito Intervac Center, the um, 
Global Institute for Food Security, Global Institute for Water Security, uh, the Sylvia Fedorik Center for Nuclear Innovation, and so many more. So we have a very well-deserved reputation for creativity and collaboration and research and achievement with all of these different research facilities on campus. And at the University of Saskatchewan, we offer over 100 different programs that are all categorized into either direct entry programs or non-direct entry programs and offered through direct entry colleges and non-direct entry colleges. So we have, it's really, really easy to think about direct entry as programs that you can apply into as soon as you're done high school. While you're in your grade 12 year, you can actually apply to direct entry. So it can mean, it means that you can directly enter into these programs right after you're done high school. Of course, um, if you meet the admission requirements, while as non-direct entry programs require a little bit of post-secondary work for you to have under your belt before you can apply into them. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about how non-direct entry colleges work, but before we do so, Caitlin has thrown up a poll there. We just want to know a little bit about what area of study most interests you, and then we can maybe tailor uh, what we talk about here today to the information that you're looking for. I see lots of folks interested in the College of Arts and Science here. The polls are coming in, the votes are coming in. Thank you everyone for joining us and for voting in our polls here today, letting us get to know you a little bit better. It's really an even, um, even spread throughout all of the other programs. Arts and Science is coming really big out in front there. So we'll definitely talk a little bit about Arts and Science. So there you folks can see arts and science and business and engineering, a few interests in non-direct entry and in graduate programs, which of course we also offer at the University of Saskatchewan, but our, our presentation here today is focused on undergraduate programs, of course, because it is the first step to becoming a USAS student. But arts and science, clear winner here today. Okay, so we'll talk about direct entry colleges because I see there's lots of interest in that, but we'll also touch on the non-direct entry colleges and programs that we have here at USAS. Okay, as I mentioned, one of the um, things that stands out about non-direct entry colleges is that you do, you are required to have some post-secondary studies completed before you can actually start non-direct entry programs like dentistry, medicine, pharmacy, and so on and so forth. And this is kind of how that works. So those are the pre-professional studies that are required there. For example, the one year for nursing or the two years for pharmacy or a bachelor's degree that is required for physical therapy or for dentistry, uh, or sorry, for medicine. And how it works is for instance, I'm going to pick on just a couple of programs here. For nursing, for instance, you would complete your one year of pre-professional studies outside of the College of Nursing, often completed in the College of Arts and Science, big winner in the area study of most interest here today. And then you complete three years of nursing in the College of Nursing. So four years later, you end up with a Bachelor of uh, bachelor of Science in Nursing. So just a four year bachelor's degree, but it is non-direct entry. So that's how non-direct entry works. It's just the first few years of the program are done outside the program. Those are the pre-professional study requirements. I hope that makes sense, but if not, let me know if you have any more questions about non-direct entry programs. Caitlin is here with us in the background and can answer anything that you guys might have for us here today in the chat. Direct entry colleges, on the other hand, we have six of them, agriculture and bioresources, all the way to kinesiology. And these are programs that folks can access as soon as they're done um, their high school studies. First and foremost, of course, agriculture and bioresources, big business here in Saskatchewan and in Canada. And when most folks think, think about agriculture and bioresources and they look at this picture, you know, they think about cows and crops and farming. And yes, that is absolutely agriculture and bioresources, but um, I use as egg bio is just so, so much more. You can learn so many different areas of studies other than just crops and farming. Um, agriculture and bioresources is one of the fastest growing industries in the world. And like I said, it is big business in Canada. One in every, I believe three jobs on the prairies and one in every seven jobs in Canada are in this industry here. And at the University of Saskatchewan, we offer programs varied, many different varied programs in all of these different areas of studies of agriculture and bioresources. 
Um, so for instance, we have two different animal science program, animal science and animal bioscience. Um, we have diploma programs, certificate programs. You can um, also, of course, take a four year bachelor's degree through the College of Agriculture and Bioresources. But for the most part, the study areas either concentrate on one of these, one of these quadrants or interdisciplinary looking at perhaps plants and animals and soil environment and the ecology. Or we might be looking at food, feed and bioproducts and making a business out of it and looking at agribusiness and applied economics at the same time. The College of Arts and Science, on the other hand, the big winner here today is the biggest college at the University of Saskatchewan by far. We are actually one of the very few universities in Canada that combine their arts and their science programs together in order to be able to offer even more opportunities for students essentially is why we do that. And so our largest college on campus has over 60 different areas of study that you can choose from. And so they offer Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science, very unique to this college as well, Bachelor of Arts and Science. There's that combined program aspect. Uh, of course, Bachelor of Fine Arts and Music, but also certificates and minors that can be uh, certificates particularly taken on their own or minors that you can tag alongside a degree program, okay? So they have tons and tons of options at the College of Arts and Science. And we find typically so many different types of students that come through this program, either a student who finds one of those 60 plus areas of study that's offered through the college and of course is going to go through the college. Also, perhaps students that are looking to um, complete their uh, prerequisites for one of those non-direct entry programs like dentistry or nursing or medicine or physical therapy or any of those programs, or perhaps students that are not yet sure what they want to explore and what they want to study at university, but they know they want to be a part of that experience. And so in the College of Arts and Science, you can explore all of your different interests. You can perhaps take music and philosophy and biology all within the same program. So it does have that flexibility for students to explore all the different interests that they have and passions. If you have any more questions about the College of Arts and Science, please, please don't hesitate to let us know. But I'll move on through our programs here. The College of Education at the University of Saskatchewan, which fosters uh, innovation and collaboration through, of course, teaching and learning and discovery and transformative pedagogy. So this is for students that are interested in teaching. Through working together, we kind of impact the development of teachers, but also of learners who are committed to advancing the growth of students and of communities. So through the College of Education, we offer early middle years education or secondary education, but also combined degrees. So for those that are interested in perhaps teaching music or teaching um, gym or physical education, perhaps we have those combined programs through the College of Education. And we also have um, indigenous education programs here at the University of Saskatchewan, our ITEP or CENTEP programs and the certificate in indigenous languages. So this program is essentially established for you to be ready to be a teacher. In your first and second year, we have learning communities where you study in a small class setting with other students who have the same future views as you. In your second year, you already get to experience, you get a field experience. So you get to experience what it is like to be a teacher. Okay, not many institutions allow students to do this hands-on learning in that early of a stage. And then your third and fourth year in the College of Education, is your classroom experience and your internship. So getting to be a teacher. We really emphasize hands-on learning here at USAS, particularly through our College of Education. Edwards School of Business, on the other hand, if anybody here is interested in business, about 100 years ago, the University of Saskatchewan gave out the very first undergraduate accounting degree, which makes Edwards School of Business one of Canada's oldest business schools today. However, Edwards School of Business is ranked in the top 5% of business schools in the world. It is internationally accredited, okay? So the investment in our business school allows us to gain that recognition with our new brand, and it helps us to position the school as one of the top 5% business schools in Canada. How amazing is that? They offer a bachelor of commerce program with a major in one of six different areas. So from finance all the way to human resources. And of course, because we love flexibility and varied opportunities here at USAS, combined degrees. So business and law, business and arts and science, business and agriculture and bioresources as well. All right. 
Next, we're going to talk about the College of Engineering, but before we do so, I'm going to pass it over to Caitlin, my colleague Caitlin. She'll tell you why she's taking over here today to talk about the College of Engineering and also be in the background making sure that we answer any questions that you folks may have. Hi everyone. So, oh, Allie, would you mind keeping the um, presentation open? Thanks. <laughs> So I launched a poll um, that's asking you, is it true that there are no final exams in engineering? So I'm just going to wait a couple more seconds. So it is actually true. In first year engineering, there are no final exams. Um, and why we're able to have this, if you could go to the next slide, Ellie. Um, is we've made some really big changes to first year engineering. And so what we've done is we've looked at what is the most effective way to teach engineering education. And we found that it's not by getting students to memorize. Um, it's not by having really stressful high stakes exams. And so what we've done instead is instead of having one huge exam at the end of your term, uh, students are gonna be tested throughout, um, throughout their first year to see um, how they're doing in their courses um, and give students chances to try again um, in their courses. So if you make a mistake, you can try that again um, and you can improve your grades as you go. So there's no finals in engineering. Uh, there's also modular courses. So instead of only having five or six courses, uh, you'll be taking much more courses that are often shorter in length. So you can learn a lot more topics in your first year. Uh, we've also introduced a lot more hands-on learning. Uh, so that you can um, really experience your degree rather than just learning a bunch of theory um, and math. Um, and then we also have included a bunch of common breaks. So you can really get to know your first year cohort um, and make it easier to learn friends um, or to uh, join a student club or study with your friends. So um, if you could go back, Ali, to the, to the other slide with the majors. So we offer eight different majors in engineering. So you can see there's mechanical engineering, civil engineering, electrical engineering, physics, chemical engineering, computer engineering, environmental and geological. And if this seems really overwhelming to you and you don't know what you would ever want to study, that is just fine because the first year is a general studies. Um, and then throughout the year, you're going to be exposed to all these different majors and you actually get to take a uh, kind of a experience course in the different majors that you're interested in. So if you can't choose between mechanical, computer, um, and civil engineering, you can actually experience those and to get to do a lab, talk to some professors, and do a hands-on experience to kind of see which is the best fit for you. And we also offer two different certificates in professional communication. Um, and we also have one in technological um, or an entrepreneurship. So you can kind of get some of those hands-on skills. And then we also have a co-op program uh, and this is an option for international students. So this is a really, really great way to make a bit of money um, throughout your degree. The average wage um, is $50,000 a year for the co-op program. So it's a great way to pay off some of those student loans and get experience before you graduate. Uh, so if you could go forward in the slides, Ali. Uh, so we have a video here. Um, we can see if this will work. If your internet's too slow, we'll just skip it. <laughs> You've heard what people say about first year engineering. It's too hard. It's all math. It's boring. We heard you and we've designed a new program from the ground up. It's something completely new. It's re-engineered. We looked at best practices from around the world and designed a program for the 21st century. We've made first year engineering more fun. We got rid of final exams, redesigned the curriculum, and finished every day with a tutorial to help you with your homework. Rather than having five or six classes for the whole term, we'll have a series of shorter classes that will be better sequenced and aligned to enhance your learning. The new first year engineering will be taught by a team of teachers devoted to first year, skilled in teaching, and working together to have a coordinated first year program. We care about your school life balance. We added in common breaks, got rid of night classes, and every day ends at the same time, so you have time for sports and clubs. We completely scrapped the old way of grading, 
You're now focusing on competency and skills, not rote memorization. We want you to improve and learn, so we're giving you opportunities to redo assignments and try again. We are giving you actual engineering experience in your first year, so you know what your career will be like someday. We've designed first year engineering to enable you to have a number of employable skills by the time you finish first year. Programming skills, CAD skills, and design, helping you to get that first summer job. We've re-engineered first year for your success. There's more than one type of person who goes into engineering. There's a place for you here. really great video that just kind of sums up all the things that we're doing here in engineering um, and it just shows that here at USAS we really care about your success and we really want you to succeed to get a job um, and to really launch your future so I'll go to the next slide so engineering is all about um, learning how to build the world that you want to live in so it's a degree that can really take you anywhere so the next college I'm going to talk to you guys about is kinesiology so kinesiology uh, studies a lot about sports and movement. It can be a great launch way into um, different sports sciences or medicine or chiropractors, lots of different opportunities with kinesiology. Um, so there's the exercise and sports studies. And another really cool thing that we offer is you can actually get two degrees in five years. So this would be an option if you want to study both education and kinesiology. So if you want to be, let's say, a gym teacher, for example, this is a great opportunity um, to get more credentials behind you in just five years. So again, this is kind of what I was talking about. So some of the different careers you can have with a kinesiology degree, uh, health education and physical education. So that'd be great with that combined degree program, uh, health and fitness and rehabilitation. Uh, cardiac rehabil rehabilitation, uh, recreation sports administration, kinesiologist, athlete. There's tons of different careers. If you love sports, this might be a great place for you. So if there's any of these programs that you want to apply for, this link right here is where you want to go. So apply.usas.ca um, and you can apply for any of these programs. And you may not know that's actually super, super easy uh, to apply. Uh, I was helping a friend um, not that long ago, and it took maybe five minutes to fill it out. Um, it's super, super easy. So there's a few things that you're going to need uh, to apply at USAS. You're going to need to graduate from high school. And if you are in the process of graduating, so if you're in grade um, 11 or 12, that is okay. You just need to graduate um, be uh, before you start studying here, of course. Uh, we're going to need to know your admission average. Uh, there's going to be several subjects that may be required for your program. For example, in engineering, you need to have pre-calculus, and you're going to have to prove English language proficiency. So this is how we calculate your admission averages. Um, and this is on our website, and I see that we're, uh, I don't want to run out of time here to be able to answer some of your questions. So these are the different things that we are going to look for to calculate your average. So to find all the requirements and deadlines, you can go to our website at admissions.usas.ca um, and you can find the different requirements for the different programs that you're interested in. So this is uh, where you can also find the different required high school classes. Um, so a lot of them will require, require you to have a math class. Some may require um, physics, for example, for engineering. And so you can also select where you attended high school. So let's say if you're um, a student from India, we have that on there. We can show you exactly the courses that you need and the required grades. So English language proficiency. I saw one student asked um, if they have to know English to study at USASC. And the answer is yes, but we also have options if you don't meet our English language proficiency. So um, if you are from a non-English uh, speaking high school, we are gonna uh, require you to show that you can um, speak English at a language that you'll be a level that you'll be successful in university. And if you're not, uh, we also have options for you too. And I believe we have some slides in the language center. Uh, so here are the different ways that you can um, prove your English language proficiency. 
and these are the different international tuitions for our different colleges. Again, you can find these online. And then next, I'm going to talk to you guys about scholarships. So if you are a great student, uh, there is lots of money available for you. And these you don't even have to apply for. They are based off of your admission averages. We also have competitive entrance awards. And these are based on things like um, your leadership, uh, volunteer work, academic achievement, lots of different things. There are lots of questions about scholarships in our chat here today, Caitlin. Um, and so these competitive entrance scholarships, for those of you that are asking about particular uh, study areas and scholarships that are awarded for those like business, for instance, yes, the Edwards School of Business does have their very own scholarships that they offer students. And we have tons of scholarships for international students. Caitlin will talk about them right away. We also have the best and brightest scholarships, and these are our biggest scholarships. Uh, and they're up to $40,000, and these are based off of academic achievement. And these are the International Student Awards that probably a lot of you guys would be really interested in applying for. So if you wanna apply for our International Student Scholarships, make sure to apply for admissions by February 15th. And again, these are some more of our different scholarships we offer that are just for international students. So it's great that uh, you're not having to compete against domestic students uh, for these awards. They're just for you guys. And really quick to answer one more question from our Q&A here. Um, whether the university offers scholarships to international students who want to study medicine, Yes and no. Um, because medicine is non-direct entry program and it is our only non-direct entry program that requires students to be um, permanent residents or citizens of Canada, it does not offer um, scholarships for international students in the medicine program. However, because it does require a four-year bachelor degree, for that four-year bachelor degree, all of the scholarships that we just talked about do apply. Sorry, Caitlin, go on. All right, so if you want to see uh, the different requirements and deadlines, um, the different scholarships and all the different things that we've been talking about, make sure to go again to our admissions.utef.ca and they'll have all of the different um, things that we've been talking about. All right, so we also offer lots of different students and uh, support services on campus. So the one that I'd like to point out is we have an international student and study abroad center. So this is a team of staff that are dedicated just for our international students to help answer questions like study permit and visa, life in Canada, working in Canada. They also offer a bunch of different social activities. So if you come here and you have no friends and don't know anyone, um, you can go to Isaac and they have things like skating um, and they take students to the zoo and different clubs that you can join. So they're really just here to help and support you. Uh, and there, again, I used to work there. It was fantastic staff and just such a, such a happy, great environment. So now residence. So these are some of our different residence buildings. Uh, this is one that's right on campus. So if you don't like to go outside, it's connected by the tunnel system. So you can walk to your classes in shorts in the middle of winter. So this is great if you are a little nervous about the Canadian winters. Uh, I would recommend living in Voyager Place. We also have College Quarter. So this one's really cool. It's an apartment style, so you can get to know lots of different uh, students, and but you still have your own private bedroom. And this one's just a short five-minute walk to campus. So there's so many different ways to get involved on campus. We have a really active student clubs and experiences that you can do. We have different uh, campus recs and sports um, and lots of different student societies or something for every single interest, everything from dancing to uh, board game clubs. All right, so if you want to be a USAS student, these are the different steps you need to follow to get admitted to our university. And this is the link to apply. And we also offer a bunch of different 
um, events that you can connect with us. So if you go to our website, again, admissions.usos.ca, and you click on that little tours and events up there, uh, you can find, uh, we have drop-in Q&As if you want to talk to me or Allie or one of our other recruitment staff. We have drop-in Q&As. We have uh, more pro uh, presentations like this that you can learn more about our different programs and talk to a recruitment officer. Uh, if you have no clue what program you want to study, we have presentations for you. So lots of different ways if you have more questions that you can get in touch with us. So again, here is our uh, contact information. And we have a trivia game, but Ali, should we skip it and just uh, have Q&A uh, Q time or should we quickly do our trivia game? I can keep answering questions while you do the Q and A because, or while you do the trivia, because I don't have access to the trivia. So that would that would be all you. I can, sounds good. I, I can so, keep going with the Q and A. Sounds good. So keep on asking your questions, and Ali may jump in as we play our trivia game. So we just have a quick ten minutes to play our trivia game. So if you have your phones, uh, just scan that QR code right there, and it'll take you to our trivia game. Or if you don't have a phone, just type in that link on the bottom, so ahaslides.com slash WWC2021. I'll just wait for a few more people to join our game. And again, so while we're waiting for people to join, um, I'll maybe pass it off to Allie. If there was any questions in the chat, uh, maybe if we want to talk about the Language Center, because I know there are some students asking about language requirements and opportunities. Absolutely. I will throw the link into the chat for our language center. The University of Saskatchewan does offer uh, English for academic purposes, English program and joint admission. So if you don't quite meet the English language requirements, but you do meet the academic requirements for a program, it is possible to get admitted to that academic program and start completing the requirements for the academic program while you're also completing the USASC Language Center um, English requirements at the same time. So I'll throw that link into the chat here. While you folks are joining the trivia game really, really quick, one thing that I would also like to mention is um, the best way to look up all of the different requirements that do depend sometimes by program, sometimes by um, where you are applying from and where you're from. Um, I really, really recommend that you go to admissions.usask.ca and just look at the requirements and deadlines looking um, through that tool where you can input what your highest level of education is and where you're from in order for it to populate the requirements and deadlines that are very, very specific to you, okay? Oh, I'm on mute. <laughs> so I'm going to start sharing our trivia game now. Um, and Ali is still going to be in the chat answering questions. And if there's any kind of questions that pop up, uh, just feel free to interrupt the game and answer some questions live. All right, so we're going to wait for our players to join. So it looks like we have quite a few students playing our game today and lots of different questions in the chat. So this picture that you're gonna see on your phone or on your screen. Uh, so this is actually the Thor Volkman building. It's one of my favorite buildings on campus and it's a historic building. It's kind of right smack in the middle of campus and students are always um, taking pictures of it and enjoying the, the beautiful scenery. All right, so it looks like most students have joined the game. So I'm going to start the quiz. Some of these questions will be based on things that we talked about. So when was our campus found? So we've been talking it's a historic campus, but how old is it? So our campus was founded in 1907. So it looks like quite a few students got that correct. So our second question, true or false? So University of Saskatchewan is part of a U15 and Ali did talk about this. So I hope that you guys were paying attention. So the picture you're gonna see on your screen now is of our synchrotron. 
Uh, so USASC hosts Canada's only synchrotron. So we do a ton of research here and we, people come from around the world to use our synchrotron. So true, good job, everyone got that. So the next question, how many international students does USASC have? So this picture right here that you're seeing is a place that we call the bowl on campus. It's a beautiful green space right smack in the middle um, that students love to sit and uh, have picnics or just chat with friends. And there's always a, a great place to meet people. Correct, over 3000 international students on campus. All right, so how many countries are USAS students from? Uh, so this photo here is actually one of my coworkers uh, from when I was working at the International Student and Study Abroad Center. Um, and there is a program where uh, USAS staff go to the airport to pick up international students. I'm not sure if that's resumed with COVID restrictions and quarantining, um, but once we're back to a more normal life, hopefully soon, that will resume. So over 130 countries. All right, so we're halfway done here. How do USAS students go between classes in the winter? So if you're from a warm country, you may be overwhelmed um, by hearing that uh, Canada is quite chilly, especially in the winter time. Uh, so again, if you remember from one of the earlier pictures, uh, this is the middle of campus, we call this the bowl. And every winter we have a, or often in winter time, we have a skating rink. So correct. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have dog sleds on campus. I wish that was true. <laughs> Uh, there's a, a system of tunnels um, on campus that you don't have to go outside if you don't want to to help you get between your classes. So we talked earlier about campus clubs and societies. So how many uh, campus clubs and societies do you think there is on campus? So the photo you're seeing right here is of the aero design team. Uh, they're a, a group that's mostly made up of engineering students and they design airplanes. So there's over 130 different clubs. So there is really something for everyone. All right, which of the following is Saskatoon's nickname? So this photo you're seeing here um, is of the Besbro, it's kind of that castle looking building in the corner. Um, and beside that is the Broadway Bridge, uh, which is one of my favorite places to be in Saskatoon. There's always festivals and activities and culture happening around here. It's so much fun. So yes, there is actually two correct answers on this one. We are called the City of Bridges because we have a ridiculous amount of bridges in Saskatoon. <laughs> and we're also called Paris the Prairies because we're known to be very beautiful. And with all the bridges too. <laughs> all right, so this is one of our last questions before we wrap it up. So true or false, Saskatoon has one of the lowest costs of livings among major cities in Canada. So this um, picture right here is of downtown Saskatoon and there actually is a third glass high rise that is now just opened, uh, kind of in that little area right there. And it's a super modern bustling place. And um, there's always uh, like live music sometimes over there. True, that is correct. So if you wanna live in a major city in Canada, Saskatoon should be your top choice. All right, so this is one of the last questions we're gonna be asking. So true or false, Saskatoon is one of Canada's sunniest cities. Uh, so this is a photo again of downtown Saskatoon in the winter time. Um, I personally love winter because uh, the trees sometimes get all frosty. It just looks like a Christmas movie, uh, which I love. <laughs> winter so, wonderland. Yes, it is a winter wonderland. <laughs> Um, so yes, we, although this picture is maybe not the sunniest, we are one of Sas we are one of Canada's sunniest cities. So even though we're cold, we're very sunny. So our last question, how many lakes are in Saskatchewan? So this is what I would say most uh, people of Saskatchewan do during the summer. Everyone makes it out to the lake, um, go boating, fishing, camping, kayaking. There's so many fun things to do. Um, and it's really diverse, the different types of lakes we have here in Saskatchewan. We have over 100,000 lakes, which is crazy. So, which is really great that they're always really quiet and peaceful. And it's just a great way to escape and uh, enjoy nature. So let's see who won. Good job. Congratulations, you won our trivia game. <laughs> 
So that concludes our trivia game. We have no more questions in the Q&A or in the chat. Wow, that is fantastic. I'm glad, I hope we were able to be really helpful to everyone today. Um, and make sure if you have any questions at all that you contact admissions. I'm pretty sure Ali put that in the chat. Um, our team would be happy to answer any of your questions if you wanna know about admission requirements, um, deadlines, anything like that, and we're here to help. Let us know. Thank you so much everyone for joining Caitlin and I here today. Perfect. We're actually perfect timing. What an amazing uh, presentation. I, I really did enjoy and I'm sure everyone came uh, and got what they were looking for. Um, so uh, that concludes this presentation. Uh, you can check out their booth in the exhibit hall. They'll be here for the remainder of the fair. Uh, and uh, thank you again. Have a good one. Thank you, Marco. Bye, Bye everyone. Thank you, everyone, again. <laughs> Bye.